Hello everybody and welcome back. So in the last one I showed you how to set up the blend constraint and I'm going to show you how I set up this with script. So when you go into this trigger here, you see it's lerping to that side and it lerps back to the original animation. And the same thing here of course, and if I walk in here, it lerps over and over and over. So if you would done this with a coroutine, it would be, they would kind of build up on each other and that's not good. But now you see it's go back and it works. So, and so there, instead of using coroutine, you should use a sync because it is uh, more performance better. And there is more functions to it. So I'm just going to start off doing it by a coroutine and have it work. Maybe that's sufficient for you. And sometimes, of course, it is. So have all UC cases have their own UC cases. So here, these are, this is a start coroutine. This one here. And this, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this one. So you just start it and then this is um, yield for one second. Uh, you can also do wait, wait for end of frame like this. But um, yeah, new as well. <clears throat> and then you do wait for seconds if you want to do one seconds. And, but you should use a sync instead. And I think you need, is it this one? Ah, it's one of these ones to need. One is used when you need even more stuff. Yeah, okay. So you need system threading. And then you can use this one. And you see it's pretty much, it's simpler. You don't need to use start coroutine. You can just call it. So if, let's say, say if you had um, void update, then you had these settings here. And if you did basic, sync this works so it's easier you don't need to do this start coroutine and then do basic like this right so it's a little bit simpler to use this part so this is the difference and how i set up this script is that i have the blend constraint, I have the triggers, so I know looking for the correct trigger box names, lerp time, hold time, and use these, these two, I don't need these, are old codes. So that's the properties, and here I have the on trigger. <clears throat> so first off, I'm just going to show you the start coroutine. And this start coroutine, we start this function here. So this part here is going from the start value to end. So if you have one to zero, it go, will go from um, right to left. And if it's zero to one, it will go from left to right. And here you see from zero to one or one to zero. It depends on if you want to look it from left to right. So this is a for loop, for loop, and after the for loop, I make sure it is absolutely to end because sometimes, even though you do a for loop for it, it doesn't really put it to the maximum value. So it's good to just do it. And then I hold it for a second, second here, and then I just do the reverse. So this is a for loop. Instead of float time start with zero as here, it starts with one. And as long as it's more than zero, we do negative uh, subtract the delta time. So this is just going back. So this is how I do kind of lerp to the blend and lerp back from the blend. And if we use this start coroutine, and we play, so it, it will work. So if I just trigger it once, you see it works. And this looks good. Going back. Perfect. But the problem is when I do like this and then I go in here. Now you see 
Now we, we kind of break it. We add lerps. We add coroutines on top of each other. So you see now it's kind of bugging out. So this behavior we don't want. So the reason, the way to do this, I'm sure you can solve it in a coroutine as well with bools and stuff. But um, you want to first, yeah, do the um, first. You want to remove this and do the async part. Instead of having yield, you're going to do the uh, things I showed you and. I already made one here. <clears throat> here you can see a weight task instead of this line here. And I'm going to, yeah. So if I would, yeah, this line represent yield return zero. And we have, let's see here, yield return zero again, this one here. I think and here we have this represent one second instead of having this yield return. So it's very similar. And here I do the same thing again. And um, I just added a weight. No, uh, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. So, but this will give you give us the same problem, but it works a little bit better. And, uh, but if you want to, um, so make sure you have a sync void instead of the E enumerator, and then it's the same. So if you look at this one, this is kind of upgraded. So if you look at the blend weights, this has, um, here we do a to token and this token is, um, declared up here and here we check if the task is still running since before. And if it is, we cancel. Uh, and here, even in a while loop, if the two, um, here we can have this if token is cancellation request. So even and down here, we see even we have wait one second. Um, I guess it will be yield return. You wait for one second, wait for seconds, and then you do one. But you can break that. You could, if you do like one minute here, you can uh, break it because um, you have this um, token here that that make always uh, can check each tick or frame if it's run before. And then it's the same await task yield as with, uh, before. So if you do this setup, and I'm going to make sure we do the correct one. Then you will see that we can even though the coroutine, well, it's not a coroutine, but the function start, we just go out from it and it will even start from the values it have because it's kind of dynamic. So this is really good. So this is a good reason to start learning this async functionality instead of the alert value. I mean the coroutine. So yeah, whoops. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I usually don't do code tutorials, but um, I hope I didn't run through it and uh, or was too slow. I'm not used to it, but um, maybe I do more in the future. I don't know, but thank you so much for watching. And if you like this stuff, stuff please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and have a great day.